Hi folks, welcome back to Year of Umbira. It's Andy here with video for week four. And this video is Infinite Cascades. Some of you have been asking me, um, Andy, how did you get your left hand so independent? How did you get the freedom there? And I'm gonna cover that in this video. This is one exercise that is um, sort of indispensable. It, does, it embeds so much learning that you can transfer into so many different scenarios in your playing. Um, and I'm really excited to share it with you. So let's do uh, make a quick start and a little bit of a recap of some bits and pieces. That's gonna take me about two minutes and then we can get inside this exercise and start putting it in your hands. The right hand, really simple. We're gonna choose from note one here up to note seven. Uh, and we're gonna play a cascade that runs down from seven all the way down to note one. But it doesn't finish there. We go down a second time. It might sound like we're playing the same thing twice, but in the second instance, all of those notes are gonna have a different role in each of the chords. Um, that will make sense to you in a second. So that's gonna be our sort of anchor, really simple, um, that we're gonna be using to start off this exercise. So here's the quick recap. Our chords, um, we prefer in Bira music, roots and fifth. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. The fifth of chord one is note five. Um, chord two, three, four, five, six. The fifth is note six. Chord three, four, five, six, seven. The fifth is note seven. Chord four, five, six, seven. After seven, we get to number one again. So we're on note one is the fifth of four. Chord five, six, seven, one, two. The fifth is two. Chord six, seven, one, two, three. The fifth is three. And chord seven, one, two, three, four. The fifth is four. Let's have a quick look at what that looks like on the Mbira and you'll um, see uh, how valuable the left hand liberation video from the Mbira deep dive, I think that was video seven, how valuable that was. Loads of people have found that super helpful. Chord one, we've got our ones and it's fifth is five. So we had this little note circle here and we popped in that high one every now and then as well. So we want to get these shapes in your hands Chord two, it's fifth is six. Oh, sorry, six is here. Chord three, we haven't spent much time with. There isn't any other note threes available to us. And it's fifth is note seven. So this is kind of a triangle, um, or you could make it a bit more circular if you like. Um, chord four, it's fifth is note one. So we've got this sort of square or circle, depending on how fluid your movements are, and that high one up there. Chord five, it's fifth is two, big circle. Chord six, we kind of used note ones in um, the Discover and Beera um, because we were favoring ones and twos in some um, Nemo Musasa variations. Um, but we're now gonna replace those ones for a three, which is the fifth of chord six. And similarly with Chord seven, we were playing note twos, we were favoring those. Um, we're gonna replace the twos with fours, which are its fifth. So we wanna get all those sorts of shapes in your hands, and then we can start putting them against these right hand notes. Um, but it's not gonna be immediately obvious what we're choosing. For our first chord, we are gonna go for chord seven against this note seven. Just sort of play around and get, get the shapes in your hands. Cool. As we move down, the next note here is roll in the chord is going to be the fifth. So the first time was a root, and now this next note is going to be the fifth. And six is the fifth of two. Uh, it gets easier now because we're just going to alternate in the right hand. This is going to be the root, next is going to be the fifth, root, fifth, root. Second time around it's going to be fifth, root, fifth, root, fifth, root, fifth. So yeah, we're just alternating between roots and fifths. Um, great awareness to be building up. Let's go from the beginning again. Seven, it's fifth is four. Six is the fifth of two. Five is the root and two is fifth. Four is the fifth of seven. Three is the root of three, it's fifth is seven there. Two is the uh, fifth of five. And one is root, and five is its fifth. <clears throat> Next time around, seven is the fifth of three. 
<coughs> six is the root of six, and its fifth is note three there. Five is the fifth of chord one. This is, uh, might seem a little bit dry, but once we've got it, it's gonna really open up so much for us. Uh, where do we get to? And four is the root of four. Chord three is the uh, fifth of six. Two is the root of two, and six is its fifth. Nice, and we're at the end now. One is the fifth of four. Awesome. So you can sort of flow through like that. And try and get all the notes in for each chord. Try and get that high one in as well. And once you've got all that down, then we can start to make things a bit more interesting. Awesome. Um, so imagine if we start playing pairs in the left hand, um, this kind of movement, uh, as we move through the different chords. Um, if we start to do that, we're going to end up with these groups of two notes. Do 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 and the second note in each pair kind of reinforces our sense of where a, a beat might be um, but by the end of our 14 chord cycle so after we've gone down through here twice and we re-enter our beat's going to be in a different position to what it was the first time around uh, and then the third time we go through the cycle as well it's also going to be at a different position don't worry though it's going to resolve at the beginning of the fourth cycle so there, there is a resolution coming. Um, it ends up becoming this 168 beat song structure, which sounds overwhelming, but um, you're going to get it really quickly. If you've gone through the previous material, this is going to be super valuable for you because you're going to end up playing every note here as a root or a fifth of a chord. You're going to be playing the roots and the fifths of every chord over here. And this shifting of the beat you're going to end up with the beat in every possible position, all of the three different positions for every chord. And also, if you look at our song structures, our, our 12 chord song structures, there's a series of 10 chords in each of those structures that's extracted from this 14 chord cycle. I'll say that again, it's, it's super important, it shows you the value of this exercise. In all of our seven traditional song structures, there's a sequence of 10 chords that's extracted from this sequence of 14 chords that we're working on today. So through practicing it, you're informing your playing of um, any song that uses those uh, seven different song structures. Nice. So let's have a look what happens when we put the, the these pairs in our left hand. Um, I'm just gonna play the root notes of each chord. So when I'm in seven, I'm going to play these two. When I'm in two, I'm going to play these. Five, seven. Um, when I get to chord three, because there's only one note three, I'm going to introduce some sevens as well, because, uh, I mean, it, yeah, it's a bit naff just to be playing the same note all the time. Um, and that, that little uh, jump in awareness is kind of like the beginning of what we're going to do next when we start to introduce roots and fifths for all of the different chords. So let's have a look what happens when we do pairs. If I put the beat right at the beginning on in position one, so on beat one of our first chord, chord seven, chord seven is going to sound like this. One, two, three, four. Uh, and then I'll be in chord two. And then chord five. And then to chord seven again. Um, so let me run through the whole thing. Listen out for this point here, where the beat in chord seven is on beat uh, in position one on beat one of chord seven. It's going to come after I've gone through this descent um, six times because yeah, we run through the descent twice for each full cycle of this song structure. Now here we go. So you're listening out for this. Ready, steady, 
And this exercise might not sound too exciting, but it opens up something. Uh, so listen on and yeah, you're going to see me improvising in right and left hand through this uh, song structure in a second. So I'm in the second cycle now. Third cycle. Oops. And finish. Cool. So that's that would be the beginning of the fourth cycle or the, the, the next mega cycle, this 168 beat structure. Cool. Um, so that might sound a little bit dry, but when we start to introduce other ideas like low highs and the fifths that we practiced a second ago, we can get something more interesting. So I'm going to go still stay with pairs in the left hand. Totally encourage you to do this. I'm going to show you another idea that you could explore um, in a second and you, you might prefer that option um, because you're avoiding this one that has got lots and lots of value. Try not to avoid it for much longer. Um, you might want to try the next one first, but yeah. This, this is what I'm selling to you in this video. It's totally worth it. So I'm going to do some low highs. I'm going to introduce um, fifths as well. I'm pointing at fours there because I'm going to start in chord seven. Cool. Um, let's see what happens. So lows and highs, highs and lows, and roots and fifths, all against this really simple structure on the right-hand side. ones in chord six there. find your um you you won't start off that quickly um but eventually you'll be like oh god well every time i play chord three i'm really avoiding that note three i'm just playing the note sevens or six uh, chord six I'm so used to playing those note ones um just like i did a second ago uh i'm gonna play that naturally but I, yeah i don't play that note three that often because it wasn't in any of the naming sasa variations or yeah, I haven't come across anything where it's played. So you're going to sort of notice your weak spots, notes for particular chords that you're avoiding, uh, and you're going to be able to set yourself mini projects to try and include those notes. Um, you could restrict yourself, for example, um, just to the upper register here. When I get to chord three, there's no note three available. So you're going to see me using notes five and seven. Um, it's third and it's fifth, yeah. I don't want us to be using that one just yet, just yet, because I want to keep the right hand simple, just from notes one to seven. Let's see what happens. Still pairs. Um, this long structure, so three um, mega cycles, or three, sorry, three lots of this 14 chord cycle, um, and restricting the left hand to roots and fifths up here in the upper left register, except for chord three, where I'm going to use a note five, possibly. Cycle, cycle two. Cycle three. And then resolved. Nice. Uh, bass. I'll incorporate this note one here. Oh, yeah, I can play that. So I'll keep my first six by mistake. Uh, 
Um, so there's different restrictions you can make. You could, oh, you can come up with any number of things. So once you've started to explore these things, um, you could say, okay, I'm gonna let myself play anything over here in the left hand. Um, sorry, I'm not gonna commit to a, a beat. I'm just gonna explore the chords and keep this regular over here. So uh, it might be, yeah, without any awareness of the beat, you can forget the beat. This is the simpler version that's maybe more rewarding to play, but harder to get into if you haven't done the other version where you have played the beat. Have a look at this option. So I'm not, I'm playing roots and fifths still, but I'm not trying to sort of adhere to any beat. I'm just running through the chords and see what emerges. finding themes just to sort of and sticking with them for a bit and then moving on to something else um, you probably find it easier to explore new themes if you've gone through the beat exercise that big 168 beat cycle um, because it's going to place the beat in all three different positions for every chord so it's going to really open up your playing um, I want to show you something else let's try um, Finger, uh, yeah, I could play the complete fingertip freedom uh, part for this whole song structure. I don't know what's going to happen here. opens things up so then you could be a little bit more improvisatory over here 
So now you've got the, all your roots and fifths, you've got your fingertip freedom exercises. I tried to restrict what I was playing to the basic fingertip freedom exercises, not the um, alternative ones that offer in your downloads. Um, let's see what happens. It's going to be random over here and random over here. pairs sort of thing, let's see whether I can do that. Because it's that 14 beat cycle, it can't, you can't, um, maintain the bouncing pairs uh, and return to the same point at the end of the 14 chord cycle, sorry. Uh, so yeah, I am juggling around what I'm doing a little bit there. Um, something nice you might find like, oh, I'm playing something that sounds like Bangiza here. Yeah, it's the same, it's that series of chords belongs within Bangiza and, and also in this exercise. You might be like, oh, I'm playing something from um, like uh, any of the progression one songs. When you do the second run there. Um, yeah, so you're gonna start to be pulling out things from different songs and maybe you'll create themes, you'll find themes that you can transplant to different parts of the progression and then reintroduce those into your playing and change your uh, like anchors and points of awareness in, in things you already thought you knew and end up coming up with more stuff. This is so valuable, this exercise, because we've got roots and fifths in both hands. We've got the beats in all three positions for every chord. 14 chord cycle, 10 chords get extracted and implanted into all of our 12 chord progressions. I just, yeah, I can't sell it to you enough. I really recommend you have a go. And um, yeah, it's addictive. Um, I'll just go in again and see what comes. And um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And also check the downloads for extra support uh, and fascinating stuff uh, about these, these song structures.
So then through all of this, you're gonna end up being able to go like, ah, oh, chord seven. I know all my notes for chord seven. Chord five, I know all my notes for chord five. Uh, chord three, you're gonna be able to find these uh, much more rapidly and have an awareness of uh, what chord you're in, what beat, where the beat is, and where those crossover points are between all of the chords. I really can't sell this exercise to you enough. Um, I, I hope you're inspired to have a go and it's it's gonna yeah, influence your playing so much and, and give you the freedom that I think so many of you are after. Well done for making it this far. Subscribe and grab your downloads and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks so much everybody.